Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of The Doctor Strange Omnibus Volume 2. Now this is Volume 2, and you can see there it's got all the various credits there. Volume 2, it's the interesting new style they've gone for. They've gone for a smaller, sorry, they keep changing the way. It'd be nice to have been consistent all the way from the start. However, you've got Marvel Omnibus there, and you've got on the back, you've got, got all the covers. I assume that's all the covers. Anyway, of the issues and it's always great to see them all nicely put there what has it got well this has got uh, strange tales 147 to 168 doctor strange 169 to 183 the avengers 61 submariner 22 incredible hulk 126 and material from marvel feature one and this book just come out so i'm just going to quickly run through the book now i was a bit not sure if i was going to buy this one because i was thinking I assume that very soon there will be an Epic Collection uh, Volume 2 that will contain, of course, a fair amount of this material that's included here. Because I've got uh, Volume 1, I've also got Volume 3 of the Epics, also I've got the Om Omnibus Volume 1 as well. So it's a weird way of collecting things. However, 700 pages, mainly in colour all the way through, some really brilliant artwork, absolutely classic stuff. I love that. Good old clear there and Doctor Strange. And of course, Ditko had left at this point. So this, all these stories now are post Ditko. And you've got there Bill Everett. I was quite surprised actually. I must admit, I'd completely forgotten that Bill Everett had done the work. It doesn't actually look at times it looks like his work, but for quite a bit of it, wasn't particularly certain it was. However, Dan Adkins, Gene Cohen, etc. And you can see the names there. And the Art Restoration, you can see the list there as well. So. Well, what's in it? Absolute classic load of stories. I can see the full list there. So you can just see, this is like 1966 all the way through to about 1971. Obviously there's a bit of a dip back to 1969 for the Not Brand Eck. There's some bonus material at the back. And many of the covers, of course, were obviously shared you know, with Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think there's quite a few S.H.I.E.L.D. ones. Not so many Doctor Strange Yes, you can just turn into another one. It was again, obviously, S.H.I.E.L.D. But the story... Now, I wasn't particularly... From the nameless nowhere comes Kalu. It was a bit of a non-character, but the story's actually continued on quite dramatically each time with uh, this. It continued for a good 30 or 40 issues where it was like, did he actually ever have any night's sleep? It was like he was off on another adventure. I don't think they ever worry about that sort of thing. You think, well, however... Obviously, you've got the good old Baron Mordo. He turns up again. How surprising is that? Baron Mordo always turns up. But you've got here this guy. <clears throat> Obviously, the Ancient One knows him. That's uh, And it's still pretty good stories there. You've got there, Kalu, Kalu, it says there. But it's nice to get a little bit of a backstory of the Ancient One. But it does continue on. Once you go from Kalu, goes into Umar and then so and so on. So. But it's uh, of course clears there as well. So the artwork is absolutely superb. I mean, it's though I must admit, it didn't really look like Bill Everett's work. Certainly of the Submariner, Submariner work. If you look at it and think, mm, there's times when it looks. And at times, even I don't know. It's, it's odd. But there's Umar. She turns up. She's the sister of Darmamu. I've never said his name right, so I don't think I ever will say his name right. However, you've got here, poor old uh, Doc is flying off. And there were some quite dramatic moments in this. Some real brilliant scenes where it's like very alien worlds or alien dimensions. Maybe not in the same way as Ditko, but I think sometimes better, sometimes worse. It was into the dimensions of death. I love the way, look at that. And you can always see it when you see it. Next time you've got that, that one at the end. Of course, you've got the letters page, always great. And then you go on to the next page, virtually the same thing. Really? Really? But anyway, you've got old Umar on the cover. Now, I'm not certain what poor old Doc was facing. He was facing some sort of like tree moss characters there that obviously Umar had sent. But still, good stories though. Actually, I still enjoyed those ones. There was some very odd artwork at times, I must admit. Some of the... Things that Maria Severin, I think it was Maria Severin was doing it, and some of the the arms were very odd, drawn weirdly. Still, I still enjoyed them. And Clear must die. Good old Clear must die.
And the stories did continue for quite a long time. It jumped from one story to the next story to the next story. And Umar came, comes to Earth. Then you've got Zom. Good old Zom. Another character that turns up. And then you move from Zom to the Living Tribunal. So you've got... Re I love the Living Tribunal. Good old Living Tribunal. Now he sort of turns up a bit more. It's obviously with Thanos, the Infinity Gauntlets and all that sort of stuff. But still, absolutely great little... And then you've got all the various other mistakes as well, which leads on to Victoria Bentley, which is a, continues on later as well. So there's a lot of things going on all the way through this. But there was I love some of the scenes. I'm some of the Dan Adkins did lots of these great look at that. Just these alien worlds sort of drawn there, you land on this alien world. Really good stuff. Nebulos turns up then. And then you got the three faces of doom. Yet again. And then you got some really weird. Just really the imagination. They really, and then you end up with sort of Oh, one of the least sort of what's known. I, mean, I think at this point the comic was going down a bit sort of all over the place. I mean, even probably in the uh, Behold the Seventh Sky you've got there uh, and Doctor Strange, Nick Fury, an unusual cover from Stranko. But you've got here, the Mystic and the Machine, you've got Yandros. He turns up later. I think there's stories like Defenders and things. But Yandros, a bit of a non sort of, not really my cup of tea, that storyline. However, Get more emails, and of course, Victoria Bentley again turning up. Many ways, it's sort of like between Clear and Victoria Bentley. Most odd how they did that. However, we've got a break there. Yes, another brilliant article by Roy Thomas. Always fascinating to read. I love these articles. It's a pity they don't put more, actually. It's always a pity they just basically they're the ones from the Marvel Masterworks. And it would be nice if they added some more with you know, why not? Just add a little bit more text, a bit more, but maybe. Of course, he does put four pages of information in, giving you a lot of detail of behind the scenes. So maybe there isn't much more to say particularly. I mean, short of showing all the rest other details. And well, I think it's a reason. However, what well, you got Doctor Strange there. And this is obviously 169. Things change a bit. The storyline sort of finally winds down. And even then, the storyline still has a bit of elements that were previous as well. The coming of Doctor Strange, and you've got obviously a good old origin. So you know there's a sort of bit of a break where the stories uh, give a rest for the storyline, but the story does move. And you've got Nightmare, which is quite odd when you've got considering Nightmare was the earliest villain. So I guess it was a reasonable choice to have Nightmare returns, the monarch of, monarch of magical menace. I love alliterations there. Though some of the Drawing is a bit odd at times, and there's, there's a lot of scenes like this, which I think that's a bit sort of, where well, he's just doing this sort of magical sort of thing, and it's not really moving the stuff. However, this is Tom Palmer. There's still some decent enough. Art. However, the art, and that's what I was just getting to the next thing. We get to number 172. 170, Damamu. I might even get his name right. Eventually. The artwork is just amazing. From that point, I think the stories just really hit a pace. They really start. Gene Cohen takes over. It goes brilliant. Gene Cohen, artist, and they share. You've got there Roy Thomas and Gene Cohen. Just classic stories. Power and the Pendulum. Just spectacular. Absolutely beautiful artwork all the way through. Non and it's got some of my favourite stories. One of the one, the one with the Sons of Satanish. And then also they got one where they're at like New Year's Eve. And I just love that one. One of the classic Christmas sort of slash New Year stories. Beautiful story. Also you've got the Avengers. Some say in ice. That's the Avengers 61. You've got, uh, oh, this one. This is the, just one of my all-time favourite Doctor Strange. I just love that. I mean, yeah, I like the snow. Just, apt, just one of the most glorious pages. Just Doctor Strange, just perfect, as far as I'm concerned. It's, uh, this one is in one of the Marvel grab bags, holiday grab bags, always been a favourite. And you've got the Juggernaut turns up, so it's a real sort of roller coaster of classic villains, brilliant stories, eternity. And then you've got Attack My Brother. Oh, it's just classic. And then weirdly, it changes slightly. And this was one of the reasons why I was a bit half minds about buying this book, because some of these stories I've already got. In fact, I've got few, quite a few places. The Monarch and the Mystic. So you've got the stories that uh, 
These were all the sort of like the undying ones or the old ones or whatever you want to call them. The sort of obviously the HP Lovecraftian R.E. Howard villains. And I love that storyline. Barry Windsor Smith all the way into Marvel premiere. Just classic. The Nightcrawler. Again, really true. And then it finishes, weirdly, on Marvel feature number one. And this is a, a really quite odd one where Doctor Strange comes back. And he's sort of to take up his mantle again of the, uh, obviously, a Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, etc., etc. However, that's it. Also, you've got, of course, a good old not brand Eck at the end, which is a very odd one. Actually, one of the most really odd ones because it's got a lot of uh, DC references. You've got the Spookter in there. You've got, and you can, you know, he's obviously the Spectre. I mean, anyone can see that. And the Dead Man as well with a big D on it. I mean, however, you got some bonus material at the back. A weirdly an unused page, though I must admit, probably I can see the reason they didn't use that page. Rejected version of page five. Yeah, it doesn't really sort of jump. However, of course, some of the brilliant Gene Cohen ones, just absolute classic. Cover production, photo stats, and much, much more. And that's it. And look at that, just on the back. You've got a good old, uh, yeah, you can't beat that. This is Doctor Strange Omnibus. I just absolutely love this book. Just a great collection of stories. Some of the stories, the early ones, the Kalu, when you look at them again, you think not so great as I thought when, when I was growing up reading them. However, they're still good. They're still okay. But they, I must admit, I hadn't realised how many stories, because when you go through it and you're just flicking through, how they continued on. It was literally with like Zom and Umar and then Living Tribunal, then off to this and that. It was quite a pace of 30, 40 stories where it literally was just non-stop. This is brilliant, just come out, so uh, definitely worth checking out. So uh, this is a definitely a totally recommended because I just love Doctor Strange. It's quite sad reading that apparently at the time, these stories were not that popular. They were not one of the weakest selling. And you think, really? Really? Because Doctor Strange was excellent. Surely people must have looked at them and thought, these are great stories. But I guess it's not Spider-Man, it's not Avengers. So uh, Doctor Strange was probably slightly... Uh, the weirder sort of stories. And even with the Strange Tales ones as well. But excellent, excellent 